In early December of 2022, the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California achieved a scientific milestone in the field of nuclear energy. They created the first fusion reaction in a lab setting that actually produced more energy than it took to start the reaction, crossing, at last, the ignition threshold. This reaction, multiple decades in the making, is being referred to as a breakthrough and historic achievement. But what is fusion? What's the importance of nuclear energy? What does this mean for the planet? And what does this mean for us? This worldwide search for truth has led to the greatest of all discoveries, atomic energy. Nuclear scientists call it the holy grail of clean energy. This tidal wave of innovation that we've been seeing. Quick, get the car. Five minutes before critical mass. Critical what? Chain of disaster is not complete. While renewables like solar and wind are clean, they're intermittent. Nuclear energy, on the other hand, doesn't give off carbon emissions like fossil fuels, and unlike solar and wind, we can rely on it at all times and in all weather conditions. The imperative for the entire economy to decarbonize and source their energy from not just more renewable sources, but frankly, non-fossil fuel dependent resources, that is here to stay and that's only growing. But let's start from the beginning. What is nuclear energy? So nuclear energy is um, an incredibly dense form of energy. In fact, it is the densest form. When a neutron strikes, the atom is split. Released neutrons split other atoms. The result is atomic energy. We're converting a small, a tiny amount of mass. That's the M in Einstein's formula. Um, through a process of either splitting atoms, which happens in fission, you can say that our pursuit of nuclear energy goes back to 1932 when James Chadwick proved the existence of neutrons, elementary particles devoid of any electrical charge. Then in 1951, the U.S. generated electricity from a nuclear fission reactor for the first time. It powered four 200-watt light bulbs. Three years later, the Atomic Energy Act of 1954 is declassified giving the private sector access to information on nuclear reactors so they could begin to develop tech. And when they did, the 50s and 60s saw an expansion in the nuclear power industry, and most nuclear power plants were built in the 70s and 80s. The people of the world use this energy for the destruction or the betterment of mankind. So fission is the process where you take very large atoms, uranium, plutonium, and the like, the big guys of the nuclear world. By splitting one big atom into two smaller atoms, that releases energy. Fission is marked by the issue of what to do with the radioactive waste that comes out as a, as a byproduct at the end. And, and that can, over the course of, in cases, up to 10,000 years, sit there and continuously keep decaying. Looks like there's a little leftover nuclear waste. No problem. I'll just put it where nobody will find it in the world. Millionaire! We have had nuclear fission incidents virtually every decade in the last 50 years. And so fission is working with a reputation of public perception of safety issues. The accident occurred here at the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant. There has been a nuclear accident in the Soviet Union. One of the atomic reactors at the Chernobyl atomic power plant near the city of Kiev was damaged. You can have an accident where a core can melt down. <laughs> And in that case, you can release radioactive material in the environment. Fission also requires uranium mining for its power plants, which presents detriments to the environment as well as geopolitical risks. Power plants also require costs to build and maintain, as well as a lot of CO2 emitting concrete. Because of this, fusion seems like the perfect alternative. Plutonium rod uses paperweight. No, oh, now that shouldn't be. Nuclear fusion again is the opposite, right? So instead of splitting, you're now combining. You're starting with very light elements. And when you take those light elements and you bang them together hard enough, they actually will melt together and will be called fuse into a new atom. The radioactivity that survives at the end of a plant's life, fusion doesn't suffer that. A great example of fusion in, in, in our experience world is what happens in the sun. You just have to go out in the sunshine and you feel the warmth coming from that fusion reactor in the sky. Being able to generate electricity from fusion could result in clean, safe, reliable electricity without greenhouse gas emissions. But while the latest reaction was a huge step, 
it's a long way away from being available on a large scale. So what's holding us up? There's a joke in nuclear fusion that it's always 30 years away. Myself and others believe that nuclear fusion really is the future. I don't think we're quite there yet, even though we've got some rather promising results out there in the, in the space. The consensus in the scientific community is that fusion could be our cleanest form of energy, and that may very well be possible. However, the public perception on safety is still real. If you think about it from a very basic standpoint, harnessing the power of the sun seems like it could be dangerous. There's billions of dollars of R&D that still have to be spent. In fusion, you need to get to a rather dense conglomerate of the particles at relatively high temperature. You have to insulate it from the surroundings. And then you have to hold it there in this sort of star-like ball uh, away from touching the walls, away from interacting with anything. And that turns out is very, very difficult. That doesn't look like a Jericho missile. That's because it's a miniaturized arc reactor. Do you suppose that our appliances would run as well on atomic energy? The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. As we wait for the next generation of nuclear power, we are left wondering, what current fusion or fission startups will be able to find solutions to these problems? Will we discover new ways to address disposal of radioactive waste or find alternatives to high cost of plant construction? There is still a lot of uncertainty, a lot of ifs and buts and whats. You're trying to control the fundamental elements of the universe here. The form of nuclear fusion that we're pursuing at TAE will ultimately take one boron atom with a hydrogen atom, so two very light elements, and it, it will fuse them together and it make three helium atoms, which is chemically inert, non-radioactive, 100% benign. I mean, it's a thing we put in party balloons, right? So there is literally no impact other than we can fill a few more party balloons with. In contrast to fission, are there any kind of accident scenarios? And the wonderful answer here is, frankly, there really are not. If anything goes wrong, things cool out almost instantaneously. The remaining steps are very clearly visible, and we have tools now that we feel are commensurate with the complexity of the job to tackle it. We are at a watershed moment in the discussion, the debate, and the economic opportunity to invest in nuclear. And the climate tech around that entire ecosystem, I would say, is the strongest it has ever been in literally a generation. Famous scientists such as Artemisovich coined the phrase nuclear fusion will be there when society needs it. And I think right now society does need it. Humanity is now within striking distance of actually harvesting fusion for the first time. So I always say to people that long history shouldn't shy us away from a very bright future and frankly one that is pretty imminent.